In lab four, we talked about the use of shear plates and how they can show how well a beam is collimated. In this lab, lab eight, we explored the use of both wedged and non-wedged shear plates in interferometric optical testing. Once a collimated wavefront has passed through an optical component, such as a lens, the lens will cause aberrations in the wavefront. With this in mind, passing an aberrated collimated wavefront through a shear plate will create a different interferogram than the straight line fringes seen in lab four. The aberrations present in a test lens can be qualitatively assessed through shapes and characteristics of the interferogram, and through a whole bunch of math, the amount of each type of aberration present can be found, and this is precisely what we'll be doing in this lab. Using the standard lineup procedures, the laser, beam expander, and the collimation lens were aligned. The OPL was increased by introducing a 45 degree mirror to allow for using a power, low powered reference lens to measure the quality of a test mirror. Since the shear plate is in the default orientation, we have created an X-sheared shear plate interferometer. After collimation, the observed fringes on the shear plate are roughly straight. The residual aberration observed as shown is possibly due to tilt in the system. This makes sense due to the orientation where we would see the minimal aberration. Next, we introduced a defocus in the collimation lens. This defocus causes straight line fringes to tilt relative to the reference line. The reason for why we have a tilt when introducing defocus is from the change in the OPD of the wavefront. This introduces a wavefront traveling in the opposite direction, and when summed, they result in a tilted fringe pattern. This is the same result for all decenterings of the wedged plate. When the lens is decentered in any of the experiments done, the position of the beam was the largest difference. The fringes just cycled through, but it didn't change the shape of the fringes. This was tested in both axes. We concluded that the shear plates aren't as sensitive to decenter. It was also extremely difficult to decenter in Y since we ran out of the variable height post holders, but with X shear, we knew that the fringes would be unaffected. For the next portion of the lab, the collimation lens was turned around 180 degrees, oriented for maximum spherical aberration. When at the optimal position, the observed friends was shaped as an S. When introducing defocus, the result is the same as when we were in the ideal orientation, and this caused the S-shape to tilt about the reference line as shown on screen. When decentering the collimation lens, this caused the S-shape to translate respect to the reference line. When both defocus and center were present, the result was a combination of two movements, and the fringes would straighten, or would appear, the fringe spacing would narrow, and the beam itself would translate along the shear. For part G, we introduced a curved mirror with an unknown focal length as well as a 1 meter focal length good quality reference lens. The reference lens was placed directly after the shear plate, which has been rotated 180 degrees to allow testing of the mirror. The ideal location for the system is when the fringes appear to be parallel to the reference line and does not have any curvature. This means there is no detail or defocus in the system. The fringes seen indicate some level of on-axis spherical operation as they seem to have a slight shape to them. Next, we introduced defocus in the system by moving the mirror back slightly as seen in the video. The fringes begin to rotate as explained in the previous portion of the lab. However, the difference now is that the outer edges get a little bit larger as the ghost reflections bouncing off the mirror interact with each other. We then remove the defocus and decenter the lens as expected the fringe cycle through the different orders without changing the shape. Decentering along the different direction appears to shift in a program along the reference line while maintaining the shape of the as seen. Using the method in lab 4, we can also calculate the focal length of the mirror. Using this, we estimate the focal length to be roughly around 275 millimeters. We had used the other group's experiment setup for the non-wedge shear plate, however we ended up switching out the spatial filter pinhole size with the microscope objective and keeping the same collimation lens. The beam was then emitted onto the non-wedge shear plate, which was then directed off to the screen on the side. At best collimation, we expected for the non-wedge shear plate a null fringe. What we instead got were circular fringes that were from tilt. We could not get rid of the tilt because of how the collimation lens was mounted. The lens holder had no tip tilt for the lens itself. When we instead moved the lens along the rail to attempt to alleviate the fringes we saw, we ended up over or under correcting with straight line defocus fringes coming into view. When the collimation lens was defocused, we saw what we were expecting, which was the straight line fringes in the center of the spot and the spherical evaporation on the sides of the, sp of the spot. Whenever we moved the spot in or out, we would see a change in the fringes as they would increase or decrease depending on which way we were adding defocus. When the collimation lens was decentered, the fringes moved accordingly with the decenter of the lens. With both defocus and decenter, the fringes were straight line fringes and translated with the shear direction. Adding more defocus, of course, increased the number of the fringes that we were cycling through. The best focus with the non-wedge shear plate proved to be extremely difficult. We should have seen a single null fringe at the best focus, but as seen here, that's not what we saw. This was likely due to tilt in our system that we were unable to When we oriented the collimating lens for most aberration and defocused it, we saw straight line fringes as we expected. A zero wedge shear plate acts as sort of a double derivative to the side L representation of aberrations. This being stated, spherical aberration is observed by horizontal parabolas in the interferogram shown here. As shown here, our system was insensitive to decentering in both X and Y directions, which shouldn't be the case. We should have seen fringe variation in the Y direction given that the zero wedge shear plate is sensitive to decentering along that axis. This could either be caused by tilt or improper alignment. Coma was also not observed in the system but was potentially present. It was likely minimal and difficult to spot due to all the spherical aberration.